Now, uh, let's open our Bibles where we were at this morning, Joshua chapter 5. Uh, we're not starting at verse 10 this afternoon, we just start at verse 14. <coughs> Joshua 5. And uh, just two verses, Joshua 5, verse 14 and 15. This morning, but from a different, a different aspect. Joshua 5, verse 14 reads, And he said, Nay, but as captain, sorry, we'll start at verse 13, I'm sorry. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and, he, and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And he did so, and Joshua did so. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can uh, truly just uh, come before you. And, uh, Lord, open your word, spend a bit of time in your word this afternoon to, to get more of, of your word into our hearts. And I just do pray as, the, as we do so that the Holy Spirit of God would lead and guide and, uh, Lord, open up your word to us as you would have it to uh, and apply it to our lives individually. Father, I thank you for that, Lord, I uh, just do commit these things to you and ask and pray them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, here we have Joshua. Um, we thought about this, well, this morning's point, uh, main, main thought this morning and tonight, uh, uh, tonight's thought, we, uh, we thought of this about this a little bit on Friday night, but I've, uh, like this morning, I want to expand on it and go deeper into it. Uh, we have here Joshua and, uh, encountering the captain of the Lord's host in verse 14. Is, that's what the Lord said there. As Joshua uh, was by Jericho, and we assume uh, when it says he was by Jericho that uh, Joshua is, is checking out things. Uh, let's, let's think about the whole flow of the, the pattern here. Joshua chapter 1, we see uh, the Lord said to Joshua, to be strong and of a good courage. He said that three times to him. Uh, then uh, after that, they, they crossed the River Jordan. Uh, as we saw this morning, they partook of the, uh, the Passover, the first Passover in the, in the Promised Land. And, uh, and they started to get the old corn, or the, the stored corn, uh, as, we, as we looked at. But then it shows, in verse 13 it says, and it came to pass. So in other words, it comes up, and you know, obviously a short time after, uh, Joshua was by Jericho. So we can understand, you know, they, they've entered the promised land, they, they've held the Passover, they're getting ready to, to look to the Lord for what comes next as they go into the promised land. They've just entered it. And so Joshua's over by Jericho. So he's, you know, he, maybe he's sitting on a, sitting on a, on a rocky, slope or something like that, looking at the city in the distance and uh, sort of checking out the, the fortifications and then if you, if you study what Jericho was built like, it was very well fortified. Uh, it sort of went up in layers, the walls, and, uh, and that offered them great security. And, uh, and so it was something that was impossible for the children of Israel to, to, uh, to capture on their own. And so he's there and he's looking at it. And as he was doing that, uh, it says there, Behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. So Joshua uh, didn't recognise at that time that it was the captain of the Lord's host, which would probably indicate that the Lord, in, the Lord Jesus in his Old Testament appearances had not appeared to Joshua before. Uh, we know that Joshua's had much encounter, many encounters with, with the presence of the Lord, uh, and we'll think about that in a minute. Uh, but as far as the Lord uh, 
in his Old Testament appearances, uh, appearing to Joshua, this would seem to be the first time, personally. And so he says, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? He's saying, basically, who are you? Whose side are you on? And, uh, and so uh, the Lord's response is, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And look what Joshua, how he responded. It says, And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And did worship. So from the words that the Lord spoke to him there, uh, at that point of time, Joshua realised it was uh, the Lord in, in one of his rare uh, Old Testament appearances. And, uh, and it says that Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped him. Now, the, uh, the, the, the situation goes on, and verse 15, The captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And, uh, and so Joshua, he's having a new experience in his life. He's never uh, experienced something like this before. You know, uh, I made the, uh, the comparison for, for a minute on Friday night uh, about, uh, between, sorry, between Joshua and Moses. Um, you know, for Moses, uh, the Lord uh, appeared to Moses in the burning bush. Uh, it was the first appearance. And as Moses drew near, the Lord said, Take your shoes off your feet, uh, for, for the ground where on thou standest this holy ground. And, and of course, he did so also. Uh, but here we have uh, Joshua having a like experience. But, uh, you know, uh, there, there is a difference, and we'll think about, we'll think about that in, in a little while. And so, here it was, Joshua, that had been Moses' minister for 40 years, through the wilderness. This was the same Joshua that had witnessed closer than anyone except Moses the presence of the Lord uh, in his power and might. Uh, as the glory of the Lord, you know, when you think about the, okay, Moses up on the mountain, he's receiving the tablets of stone, the word of God uh, on the tablets and, and all the law. Um, he's up there on the mountain. Moses is up in the cloud of the presence of God. But Joshua's part the way up the mountain. You know, actually, I mean, I was asked one time, not a long ago, how do you know that Moses, uh, so, sorry, that Joshua didn't go all the way up with Moses? Oh, well, they're, they're, you can't prove that from the scriptures. Without going into too long of a thing, it's as simple as this. Uh, the ones that went to the mountain, the foot of the mountain, with Moses was Aaron, um, Abihu, and uh, what was the other son's name? Nadab, I think it was. Uh, and, uh, and then 70 of the elders of Israel. But Joshua was not mentioned in the group of people that went. Why? Well, if you go over further, when the 12 spies were selected to go into the land of, Is into the, uh, land of Canaan to spy it out, uh, Joshua was named as one of the heads of the tribe. In other words, one of the elders of the tribes. So Joshua was actually included in the 70. And so that's why he wasn't specifically named there. But in that part of the passage, it says about... Um, the Lord had said to Moses that he would come up alone, up into, the, up into his presence. And so when Joshua went up, he didn't go all the way up, he went part of the way up. He left, left the rest of the elders of the tribes down here. He went part of the way up with Moses, and Moses went all the way up into God's presence. And we can confirm that by the fact that the Lord told Moses up there what was happening down in the camp, but Joshua didn't know. Uh, when they're going back down, Joshua said, oh, I hear the sound of singing. And, and, Josh, and Moses said, no, 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 that's not the sound of singing. Uh, sorry, of war, of war in the camp, I should say, all the way around. Uh, I hear the, the sound of war in the camp. And, and what, uh, Moses said, no, no, it's not the sound of, of, uh, of, of that, but you know, the singing that I hear. And so um, Moses knew what was happening in the camp, but Joshua didn't. So we, we can see that Joshua didn't go all the way up. He didn't know what was happening down there. Now I'm saying that for a reason, just to concrete for us that Joshua was the closest to the presence of God Almighty out of all of the Israelites except Moses. The Lord let him go halfway up the mountain or half two-thirds, whatever. 
but stop short of going into right into God's presence in the cloud. And so this, this same Joshua, who had experienced great things like that, he had great vision from God in his life. He got to, he got to experience uh, things of God, the things of God in a way that nobody else did. And so this is the same Joshua that stayed at the tabernacle that Moses pitched outside of the camp. After they'd gone down from the mountain, Moses had sorted out the problem in the camp. It tells us that Moses went out and pitched a, a tabernacle, a tent for a tabernacle outside of the camp, away from the camp. And so Joshua was there when Moses was finished. Moses went back to camp, but it tells us specifically that Joshua stayed there uh, at, the, at the tabernacle in the presence of the Lord. This was that same Joshua. The same Joshua that had uh, instruct, when the instructions were given from God to go into the, to spy at the land, he went in with 11 other spies to check out the promised land and was one of only two, that is his partner Caleb, uh, who had the faith to trust God at that time. Uh, so all along, God was giving Joshua great vision, which gave great faith. This led Joshua to be the chosen new leader of Israel to actually take them into the promised land. Now the Lord said to Joshua in, in the first nine verses, as I've already, already uh, uh, mentioned, said three times to be strong and of a good courage. And one of them was to be very courageous. So at the end of that, the Lord said to him, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Now this was talking on the national level, leading the children of Israel. And the reason why we thought about all of what God had done in Joshua's life up to this point of time, uh, the great vision that, that the Lord had allowed Joshua to have uh, of the Lord himself, uh, we can, is because we can see how God was building him up to this task. And so in Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse 1 through to verse 9, with those three times he was told to be strong and very courageous, uh, that was as far as the national level goes. This is, uh, Joshua, I've given you a job to do. I've given you a task, a special task. And you need to be, very, you need to be strong and very courageous to do this, to do this task. Uh, but Joshua, um, this task is the next level. You've been up there with Moses near the, near the top of the chain. Uh, you've observed how Moses has led the children of Israel. Uh, you've seen, you've probably even taken some responsibility, like when they, whenever there's some, someone attacking, you know, you led the army to, to defend Israel. You've had responsibility, but, but Joshua, this is, a, is another level. And so Joshua, um, you know, you need to, uh, you need to have something special to help you at this time. It's not enough to, uh, for you to, to be able to uh, be encouraged by me saying to you, be strong of, 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 uh, and be very courageous. Uh, you need something special. As you start out in this next level of responsibility. And so here in, in Joshua 5, we see a personal appearance of the Lord in his Old Testament form. In Joshua chapter 1, it, it says, uh, if you have a look there, if you've got your Bibles to open there in Joshua, have a look in, in chapter 1. It says, uh, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead, therefore go, arise, go over this Jordan, etc. Gives him the instruction, tells him to be strong and very courageous, etc. Now, it says that the Lord spoke to him. It doesn't say how. See that? It doesn't say how. Quite often in the Old Testament, uh, the, the Lord would give um, the pro a prophet, if whatever prophet was alive at the time, he would give a prophet the message to pass on to the king. Or in this case, um, you know, uh, uh, Joshua would have had the, uh, the Levite priesthood there. It doesn't say how the message came to Joshua, but it certainly doesn't note any personal appearance. As opposed to chapter 5. In other words, in chapter 5, there was a personal appearance of the Lord where Joshua saw the Old Testament appearance with his own two beady eyes. 
the, the captain of the Lord's host. It was on another level. It was personal. It wasn't just about being the leader for the nation. It wasn't just about being the example. Uh, you know, when he said in Joshua chapter 1, be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Uh, the, Lord's, the Lord's basically saying in all of those verses, you know, Joshua, uh, you need to be strong and very courageous because the nation is watching you. And sometimes in our lives as Christians, we will, we will, we, we know that we've got to, as, uh, as I think it was Joab say, uh, said in, in his time, captain of, uh, of David's army, or the general, I should say, he said, let us play the man for our God. And, and sometimes in our lives there comes times where we've just got to be strong and courageous and play the man for God. Be a, be a man or, or, as the case may be, a strong woman for the Lord. And, 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 not, and not be what we would naturally be, but be strong for the Lord. And that's Joshua chapter 1. But Joshua chapter 5 is the Lord coming to Joshua and saying, Hey Joshua, I, I know you just need a touch of the Master's hand. And so uh, here in Joshua 5, it doesn't show that there was... Uh, anyone else it doesn't show there's anyone else there with Joshua it's just Joshua by himself as we can see and so it was just for Joshua to be there with the Lord himself for a personal touch of the master's hand and that's the first observation but the application is brethren our walk with the Lord is personal just as salvation is individual and it's a time where we, where we do business with God one-on-one, -on -one, where we see our need as a, as a sinner, a lost sinner, guilty before the holy, sinless God of heaven and earth, and we cry out from our hearts and ask Him to save us from, from our sins and from hell forever. Uh, our walk with the Lord, ultimately, is personal. It's individual. And we need to get that in our, in our heads, that our walk of faith is individual. It's us dealing with God one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, as I, as I say many times, uh, your walk of faith does influence others, for good or for bad, one way or the other. But where it starts is individual. Your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Saviour, your personal relationship with Him comes out. People see your relationship with the Lord, what it's like. But it still starts one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. And so the Lord is only too willing and too happy to spend as much time with you and I individually uh, as, as He can. He wants to. He yearns to. He doesn't just sit there in heaven and every morning go, oh, well, it's time for so-and-so's uh, 15 minutes before the throne of grace. Come on, hurry up. Let's get this over and done with so I can move on to someone else. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Anytime, anywhere, God is, is waiting for you to come before the throne of grace. He wants to spend as much time with you personally as he can. You know what? The more time he can spend personally, individually with you, uh, the more influence he can have on your life, the more Christ-like your life will become, the more of an influence he, he can use you for in this world, and, and the more you can help your brothers and sisters in Christ be strong and of a good courage. See, the Joshua 5 personal appearance, uh, if, if the Lord could strengthen his inner man, uh, then it's going to help him to be strong and of a good courage. It's one thing to play the man for our God, as I've already said, but it's another thing for that, for that strength to be there from the Lord from within. That's why you have the Holy Spirit of God. He wants you to get a hold of that. Second observation. It was one thing for the Lord to say to Joshua, be strong and of a good courage in respect of leading the nation. Uh, and and I've, already kind of, I've already said this basically. I've jumped ahead of myself. But it was needful for the Lord to spend time with Joshua one on one to address the inner man. For Joshua to see those things in the inner man that needed work on them. And there's a couple of verses which are pretty pretty obvious. 
Uh, first one, of course, is Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Keep your Bibles open in Joshua. But go over to Hebrews 4. Have a look over there in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4, well known verses. Verses 15 and 16, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so the Lord wants to address the inner man. When you go to the throne of grace, uh, quite often, what are, you, what are you going to the throne of grace for? Uh, because you're looking for God's grace. Because you need God's grace in times. You need God to speak to your heart. You need God to speak to the inner man. You need God to confirm to the inner man and to lead the inner man in what he, in what he wants in your life. And so it was needful for the Lord to spend time with Joshua one on one to address that inner man. Uh, let's have a look at John chapter 14, verse 16 as well. John 14, verse 16. In John 14, verse 16, the, the night the Lord was betrayed, he uh, told the disciples that he was going and where he was going at that time they could not follow. Uh, but in John 14, verse 16, he said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. In other words, someone to replace the Lord Jesus as, that had walked with the disciples literally for, for those three and a half odd years. Uh, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Personally. Personally. He wants to be your comforter in times when you feel like you can't have comfort. And how deceitful and deceptive is our old flesh that says there can be no comfort in, some, in, in different times in their lives. When, when we think that uh, there, is no, there, is no, uh, there is no comfort in a situation and there can't possibly be, that's a, that's a lie from the devil. Working through your flesh. There can be comfort. Yes, there's always going to be sorrow in times, no matter what. But God can still be there in those times of sorrow to be a comfort in that sorrow. And that's what He wants to be. How do we get that? Our personal time with the Lord before the throne of grace. Getting on holy ground, as it says back there in Joshua with when the, uh, sorry, when the captain of the host appeared to him. Uh, the third observation. The, Lord, the Lord's presence made that place where they stood holy ground. Now go back there in Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Let's follow the pattern here. First of all, in, in verse 13 of Joshua 5, Joshua spies the man, uh, which we know as the captain of the Lord's host, in other words, the Old Testament appearance of the Lord, standing over there against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went unto him and said, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? The Lord then says, Who he is? But as captain of the host of the Lord, I have now come. Joshua falls on his face to the earth and worships him in recognition. Then verse 15, the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And Joshua did so. What can we get from this observation? The Lord's presence made that place where they stood holy ground. I, I realise this is, this is an Old Testament setting, but for us to put it into New Testament setting is this. There was nothing special about that ground. It was just dirt. It was just ground. Maybe a bit of grass or whatever. There was nothing holy about the ground itself, but the presence of God made it holy. A holy place. I'll tell you what the, the application is for you and me. It doesn't matter where we are in this sin-filled, sin-cursed world, wherever it is that you are, you're always able to go onto holy ground before the throne of grace. It doesn't matter 
whether you're in a, between a rock and a hard place in life, wherever it may be, uh, you still have access to that holy ground. And it's found simply by getting on your knees. Or bowing your heart wherever you be. If you can't get on your knees wherever you are, you can, you can certainly bow your heart before the Lord and your head and close your eyes and, and, and uh, spend time with the Lord on holy ground. Again, you know, the verses for that would be Hebrews 4, uh, verses 15 and 16, which we're not going to go back there. But let us come boldly, confidently, under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. No matter where we are, we're always in the presence of holy ground. It's found by bowing down our hearts before the Lord through the Holy Spirit of God that indwells each and every one that's truly born again. Fourth, obs fourth observation. Uh, I mentioned this the other night. What the Lord spoke to Joshua is not revealed. What the Lord spoke to Joshua is not revealed. Uh, in Joshua chapter 1 when he is talking on are talking to Joshua about being strong and of good, of good courage because he was the next leader of Israel. He was the one to, to take them, to, to lead them into the promised land that had been promised to the fathers ever since Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and right on through to this time, uh, even Moses, the, 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 man, uh, the man that God used, the meekest man on earth at that time, to, to bring Egypt, uh, sorry, the children of Israel out of Egypt. God had made the promise of the promised land for hundreds of years to the fathers, the patriarchs of Israel. And here was Joshua, the, the one that God chose to lead him in. You stop and think about that. What a privileged position. What a blessing. What a, what a real blessing God gave him. And so Joshua chapter 1 was, you can understand the importance of him giving that pep talk, but, but here in Joshua 5, uh, as we've already thought about, it was personal, it was one on one. And the Lord didn't reveal in the word of God what he said to Joshua. Uh, it's okay for us to know about what he said to, to Joshua in Joshua 1 about leading the children of Israel into the promised land, that he had to be strong and courageous, etc., uh, but, but when God was dealing with Joshua on a heart-to-heart -heart basis, uh, he doesn't reveal that. The application for you and I is that we often have to have those personal conversations uh, with the Lord to cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. For you need to cast all of those things on the Lord that you can't share with anybody else. Your fears, your cares, your concerns, your, your thoughts that you couldn't share with anyone else. That, those are the words that need to be talked to the Lord. Uh, where uh, it, it's, not, it's not general knowledge, but it's personal. Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. You know, one of the things as a pastor, pastor that you need to learn to do is, is to, you know, when people tell you some things, uh, you know, you, you, you obviously can't pass them around. Yeah, you know, sometimes I hear people say something about somebody else and I, and I sit there and go, yeah, but you don't know what I know. People make assessments and give their opinions and stuff like that. I'm sitting there and, and sometimes I do, I bite my tongue and I think, you're talking in ignorance. It's the same thing with God. The Lord's not going to go to, to, to the other people in the church and go, hey, you know what so-and-so shared with me from your church? Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, You should hear this one. Oh. No, no, no. Not at all. He won't do that. There's times where you've just got to go to the Lord and you've just got to pour out your heart in those matters that that only he can understand your heart with. Because let's be honest, sometimes we don't even know, we don't even understand what we're thinking ourselves. 
If we're honest, we don't. Sometimes we get so muddled up and confused with what's happening in a certain situation where we just go, God, only you can understand what the, what the reality of this is. The Lord did not reveal what was said between him and Joshua in this part. And you have the confidentiality, you have the love and the concern and the care and the mercy of Almighty God, your Saviour, when you go to the throne of grace, when you get on holy ground with Him. And that should be a great comfort to us, a great source of strength. And the fifth observation and last observation is this. This time with Joshua was a time before Israel had, to, had moved forward to occupy the land. Josh was there and he's, he's, as we see in the scriptures there, Joshua 5, he's by Jericho. He's near Jericho. Like, I, like I've already said, he, he was probably summing up what, was, what, what they would possibly do. As any good commander would do, he doesn't just go, oh yeah, she'll be right, mate, we'll just take it on and it'll be all good. No, no. Uh, he was obviously thinking about, I wonder how we're going to do this, what the Lord's got planned, how, how are we going to achieve this? And then the Lord appears as the captain of the host. He appeared with a drawn sword and as captain of the Lord's host. Sounds a bit like the army, doesn't it? But you stop and think about it. He was thereby relating to Joshua personally. Here's Joshua, the newly minted leader of Israel. He's led the children of Israel in the defense of Israel during their journey through the wilderness. He was captain of the, of the host in Israel. But here he had the captain of the Lord's host with the sword drawn standing over near him. The Lord wasn't going to use the sword. But he's just saying, hey, Joshua, come here, mate. I just want to put my arm around you. I just want to spend some time with you and say, I know how you feel. I, I want to speak to you in a man, Joshua. I want to relate to you as man to man. I'm captain of the Lord's host. You're captain of the host of Israel. But, but I just want to be a bit, more, a bit more personal. And I want to be a bit more personal with this. I relate to how you feel. You know, you stop and think about Hebrews 4 again. He was tempted in all points like as we are. Talking of the Lord Jesus in his earthly ministry. All points like as we are. All points. I'll say that again. All points. I've heard somebody say, oh no, he couldn't have been tempted in all points. What are you calling God a liar? If he said he was tempted in all points, he was tempted in all points, like as we are. And so, he can understand, he can relate to us, he can be like we are at times, in our different situations. Uh, you and I are never going to be captain of the host. But he understands how you feel in life and death. He understands. He was tempted in all kinds of ways in his earthly ministry. He grieved with those that were grieving. He rejoiced with those that were rejoicing. He strengthened the feeble. He sought strength from the Father to do what he did on the cross, etc., etc. The Lord can, can and will and yearns to relate to you personally in who you are and what you're facing. You know, crossing the flooded Jordan was a mere minor replication of Moses and the Red Sea crossing with no, and Joshua and the Israelites had no enemy pursuing after them. And so here is the Lord saying, okay, the problems are not behind you. You've already crossed the Jordan with nobody chasing you, but the problems 
that you would face without me in front of you. And Joshua, I just want to relate to you personally. To say, hey, I'm with you. I've been leading you through the 40 years in the wilderness and you'd still be stuck in Egypt if it wasn't for me. I've given the deliverance. I've supplied your needs throughout the wilderness. I've given you the word of God. I've showed you that I am holy, so be ye holy also. I've shown you to be strong. I've shown you to be courageous. How to be courageous and strong. But, but now, Joshua, I just want you to, to, to get all of that together and say, and, and realise that the problems that you face are before you, whereas Moses, they were behind you. And, and I'm just being personal here. Just to really give you the, the most encouragement and strength and, and to show I love you and that I'm with you and that I'll help you and I'll guide you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I think you're already getting uh, the application for our lives. But th let me just say this in closing. We too need at times the touch of the Master's hand as the, as the Lord gave to Joshua here. So be assured, the Lord was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly or confidently unto the throne, in my own words, of God's undeserved favour. To seek mercy. Oh, what a word that is when you stop and think about it. The mercies of God. To seek mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace to help in time of need. He's only as far away as the bowing of one's heart. No matter where we are, holy ground is before us if we just bow our hearts and get before the throne of grace. And that's where he yearns for us to be. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, your great concern for us, your great care, your comfort, your love. Thank you, Lord. And Father, as we close this afternoon and we look at the year ahead once again, our Lord, only you know what lies ahead in the year ahead. Just as only you knew what uh, things Joshua and the children of Israel would face as they went forward into the, land, into the promised land. So Lord, I just do pray that uh, as we uh, go from here this afternoon, Lord, may we take these words to heart. And I mean that, Lord. May we take your word to heart. Because, Lord, that's what you want. You want us, Lord, to know that you're ever near. And you do care. And you yearn to comfort. You yearn to God. You yearn to lead. You yearn to, to uh, strengthen and to give us the courage that comes from a, a, a personal relationship with you. And so, Father, I just, Lord, uh, do commit these things to you. Lord, I do ask and pray them in the name of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord bless you. Good afternoon.